In example two, we're going to find the lowest common denominator as though these were denominators or the least common multiple of these two terms. And we look at the coefficients and we see that it's one. So our step one, uh, the lowest uh, uh, common denominator or least common multiple of the two numerical coefficients is one. Then we see x, y, and z. It's in both terms. So those are, uh, if it's in any term, if a variable's in any term, you will use it. So we put in x, y, and z here. And then we take everything to the highest power they occur. And seventh is the highest power that x occurs. One is the highest power that y occurs. And four is the y highest power that z occurs. And this is our lowest common denominator, as though these were denominators, or the least common multiple of these two terms. Uh, example three. Uh, we have something a little different. We have sums here, and we consider a, this sum as like a variable. This is like the variable w. Notice this x minus 2 is different from the x plus 1, so these are like two different variables, even though they're sums. And we do it the same way. I look at my numerical coefficients, and I say, well, the uh, least common multiple or lowest common denominator, if these were denominators, would be 14. So that's my first step. Step one is like a f the lowest common denominator of the two numerical coefficients. Then I have to include all variables. I see there's a z, an x plus 2, and an x minus 2. Those are all the variables. So I put those in there as a product. And then I take everything to the highest power that it occurs. Well, z4 is the highest power z occurs. The highest power for x plus 2 is 3 to the third power. x minus 2 is squared. And that's what I write right here. You might look that over and, and see how I got that.